Hi, my name is Rosalind Miles, and I'm an artist that lives and works in Los Angeles. Uh, a brief history would be um, that I began making art when I was hurt in an accident. I've been making art since I was a little kid, but when I really started thinking about doing it professionally, I had hurt myself and had my mouth wired shut. And I'm a very expressive person, so I couldn't talk. So I was writing things down to everybody. And I was in my early 20s at the time, and I'm writing notes, and then I started drawing things, and then I started drawing things, and then I started making things. And I was at home from work for like two months, and I just made all this stuff, and I went, Oh, and I got better, <laughs> and I got up, and I was like, I'm gonna keep doing that. That made me feel great. I think I was most inspired by, oh, that's, that's tough, because now I'm thinking about David Hammond. I had seen, I'm, I'm serious, I had seen something of him in a show he was doing in New York at the time, and I was thinking I would love to go and see this show and then I started thinking about Rauschenberg and Purefoy, and I started looking into all these artists, and I had a long conversation with Mark Greenfield, and Mark was a big reason why I started seriously diving into art. The very first time was when I applied to a graduate art school. I went to undergrad, I went and studied theater and dance. I started out as performer. Um, but when I applied to graduate school, I had been working in the film industry and I really, really love cinema. And I was take, making this movie and I was making a piece of work that would help get me into art school. And I said, let me go back and check out my father's people. So I went to New Orleans and I made this small video about my father. And it went from being a little cute thing like film the family to uh, me finding out that my father's story was much deeper than I thought it was. And that New Orleans was a whole new thing. And he's actually from Monroe, Louisiana, or grew up there, he's from the islands, but grew up in Monroe, Louisiana. So I went there and I met my uncles and I made this film and it turned out really good. And that's how I got into art school. Yes, I've always been interested in textures, fabrics, colors. Um, I've always been interested in African art, even again as a young kid, because I noticed that Africans, they take everything. It's people that have nothing. They take and use everything. So I would look at their work and their mask and everything, and I'm like, oh, they, they took the trash can and made that. They took this rubber mat and made that. So I've always been uh, taken with that, with reuse, with reusing, with rebuilding and using what's right in front of you to express yourself. Well, I really think it's important that you, I like to tell stories in my work. That's how I work. I like to tell stories. Most of my stories are about women and women's, either their contributions, women's hands, the work that we do, how we work in the community. I think it's what has held uh, most communities together, but especially, you know, black communities. And so I always kind of want to pay homage to that. And when I'm telling a story about women, about myself, my mother, my father, whoever, when I'm telling a story, that's where I start. And then I think about what materials I will use to tell that story. And it makes the pieces richer. I think if you just say, I'm sure, you know, to each his own, but if you say, I like this fabric, and I'm gonna make something with it, that's cool, but if you're like, wow, it took me forever to do X, X, and Y. I wanna tell that story. What can I use here? Oh, this might really help me tell that story. And then your work is deeper. That's, that's my thing. I just think that's deeper. To have a real message and a real story it doesn't have to always be sad. It doesn't have to always be happy, but something that motivates and moves you and you find a way to express it. I was working one day and I told him I couldn't find something and he said, if we're in New York or Los Angeles, don't ever tell me you can't find it. It's simply not true. And that is true. So one of the best things about working in LA, we got it. We got it all. We do. If you need to find something, materials, people, something open in the middle of the night, you know, whatever it is, it might take a minute. But we have a real, a supported 
art foundation. There are a lot of things to support you here in the arts, a lot of mechanisms. The other thing that you need, <laughs> financing, of course, right? So you have all of these things, but depending on what it is and when you need it or why, it is definitely financing. And then sometimes, uh, depending on where you are with your career and what kind of art you do, sometimes it is literally support. Not your artist family, but maybe your real family doesn't understand. Maybe your real family is like, go get a real job. Why are you doing this? What are you, why are you playing with them blocks? You know what? Go get a job. So art takes time. It takes your mind being free. It takes dedication. And it is actually hard work. But a lot of people don't see it that way, and they just think you're playing. And dealing with that can sometimes be very difficult. I feel like it's better. Uh, when I began, everything was about New York. New York was everything. And then, you know, I would say over the last five, six, seven, eight years, half of New York has moved here. And it, it, at least it's more balanced. And I still look to New York as a mecca of art and some great artists. But we have great artists and we have great institutions and great um, environments in which people can show and different ways of showing you know and our weather permits a lot more outdoor experimentation natural stuff oh i just i think we're blessed with the weather and you know the sun well i have to say when i've been in uh back down south when i've been uh just, you know, L.A., unfortunately, this is my hometown and I love it, but it is, uh, there's a lot of people here who are all about profit and all about money. And so sometimes what I feel is missing uh, when I'm up in San Francisco, when I was in Hawaii a little bit ago, when I was in Chicago, those towns, I feel like there's a reverence towards art that could be stronger here, like from the community. Just people look at artists in a different way, not just the artist that makes money but an artist that makes, you know, that moves you. That's important, that just to have a little more um, respect for artists. Well, I think they should support their artists. I think they should be clear about how they're going to break up the payment. When the payments are due, I think there should be contracts because uh, Honestly, I've worked with museums more than I've worked with galleries, so I haven't had that issue. But I have many, many friends who have dealt with galleries and many people who have been ripped off, disappointed. Uh, you know, this is what I was told. This is what I got. It's really, you can't do that to an artist. You can't do that to somebody who doesn't have the money to defend themselves. Or, and, and who wants to worry about that? We worried about rent. We don't want to worry about you, too. That's, that's you know, being honest, being honest up front and letting, letting them know what you can really, what you can and really can't do. I think you have to start these days, I think, you know, you have to start online. You have to, enter, you know, if you meet someone at an event, that's great, but you're meeting them at an event and they're working and they're working or you're working and there's a lot of noise and there's a lot of things. And if you're expecting someone to pay attention to you when they're you know, hosting an opening, that's not the best time. So I think at their downtime, either maybe you can visit uh, you know, the space, but best, the first handout would definitely be to make a phone call, to find out who it is who actually runs the space, who does the art. It's not always the owner of the gallery, it's not always the curator. So you wanna approach the curator, maybe invite them to your studio or show that you're doing and um, you know, send some examples of your work, but I, I think it has to be uh, to give them space at first. I think sometimes people uh, jump on people in the wrong situation and that's not gonna benefit you. I think that what Lily did with, with, you know, with Baya was the way to go about it. Um, it's not easy, but we just need to make ourselves heard and they need to be open to listening. I think that outreach from museums is much better now, you know, post George Floyd, really, you know, for us anyway. But um, they do, they need to have maybe 
I don't know, a day or a week in a year where they let people come in or have meetings, let local artists, where they meet local artists. Because think about how many artists there are and who you're seeing through the newspaper and through clippings is the creme, is the top. So you may be missing someone. Um, I know they go out to art schools. I know art schools approach them, but not everybody is going to school or they've been in school and they haven't done any, they're not at school anymore. And they're just out there working and maybe selling their stuff, you know, here and there with friends and family. I think it's really, really a good idea if gallery, galleries and museums had maybe a day uh, or a week or a weekend where they kind of open their doors to having discussions and letting artists come and just let it be a word of mouth experience and let it get out there. That's one, one thing they can do because it, it's, it's two different worlds. It's really hard to connect the two. Um, we've had some, you know, pure, the Purifoy fire, I want to call it, has been amazing and has really shined light. Um, but so has Mark Greenfield's work, Mark Bradford's work, the, you know, the uh, art space that Mark has going on down there. All of, the, all of this energy being put into young black artists, I think will pay off. And I think there's also a movement for more of the women artists, black women artists to be, you know, it's just, I, I feel it, it's just better. And if it keeps going like this, I think it's a really bright future.